What builds the legacy of a camera? Is it precise German engineering? Henry Cartier Bresson? Magnum? Countless wars and glory? Is it the power of the image, the majesty of the design, or the influence of the user? In this case, it could be all three. There's a lot to say about the Leica M6, but there are tons of videos and reviews out there already. All we can say that, like any other 35mm camera, it takes pictures. <laughs> Let's just say that it's a rangefinder, it's a perfect blend of modern technology because it has a meter, and authenticity because it's an old manual film camera. But it takes pictures just like any other 35mm camera, like a Nikon, it's got nice lenses. But the fact remains that it's a Leica. A Leica is a Leica. So we're gonna dig deeper into what makes it so special. This is a camera of all the way of history. When you buy a Leica, you're buying more than a camera. You're buying a VIP membership into this club of all its pros and cons. At least that's what modern Leica is trying to tell you. The corporation Leica, VIP club Leica. How did this all happen? How do we go from legendary photographers to Hollywood celebrities to Novorish tourists and pretty much the glitziest mall in Asia? Well, we're going to start with the most widely owned Leica camera, the M6. The M6 is quite a work of art. It's been praised by almost everyone from influential bloggers such as the late Michael Reichman, the founder of the photography blog Luminous Landscape, and Bellamy Hunt, also known as Japan Camera Hunter, who called it the best M-series analog rangefinder camera that Leica ever made. It's one of those rare cameras which is both an excellent tool but also a coveted item. Even though there are these terrible, terrible editions of the M6 actually issued officially by Leica. The 10 female viewers of this show have requested that Derek make a return. And it just so happens that aside from owning a Contax D2, Derek owns the other film camera, which is just highly coveted, and those are your only two cameras. Film those cameras. are my only two films. So cameras. it's not a bad problem to have. He only has an M6 from Leica and a Contax T2. So we decided to recruit Derek once again to find out why the M6. Why did it have to be Leica, I guess? For me, it was like if I'm gonna spend money on something, I might as well try to get the best. Okay, okay. Right. Right. So, if I saved up, I saved up quite a lot of money and then I thought, okay, either I get a Voigtlander or a Leica. And I, I was pretty fascinated with a Leica about three years ago. Okay. And I decided, okay, I'll just buy an M6. You buy it just because there's that rich history behind it. You kind of want to be part of it. But then, ever since I bought it, I haven't, been used it. I haven't used it that much, honestly. It was never about photo quality or anything. It was, it was the gear. That's the problem. So, so then, like you know this, mm -hmm. and you, like you knew at the time, it was just about the camera. Yeah. So, so actually, the good thing is that actually you're never in like self delusion. You never fool yourself like I'll be a better photographer. Oh no, God no. But you're like I just. Want I think that. all my film photos are shit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the camera I wanted. It's like having your first Rolex. That sounds like yeah. a tagline of like an advertising, my first Leica. Yeah. It's my first Leica. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't I sell it? It's more than a camera though. It's iconic. Is this also rolling? You just okay. kind of carry it. <laughs> and then people this, are like... This kid this kid's totally unprompted. Yeah, this, yeah. Guy, this, guy, this guy knows what he's doing. You could be walking around not taking any photos and you can be carrying this and people are like, ah, oh, he must be a good photographer. That's true. Our friend Brian, who lent us an M6, said that he bought it because it's the best balance between practicality and tradition. Even though he owns a Bessa, something about the Leica is quite special. The feeling is unique. 
So to load the film, you have to unscrew the bottom plate. Take it off, All right? Get a fresh roll of film, put it in there, unroll it through the, uh, through the back, and then the end of the film has to catch onto these leg things. And then you close it, screw on the plate, and then you gotta make sure that when you cock the camera, it catches onto the film. Sounds easy. But, but it's not. It's not. Yeah. And then usually you burn through one or two rolls, uh, one or two pictures, just to make sure it catches. Yeah. To be safe, I would I would cock the camera whilst the plate is not there. Right. Just to make sure it does catch. I'd rather sacrifice four four to five shots instead of sacrificing the whole roll. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. the only way to do it. Maybe all this talk was getting to me, because after tinkering with the M6, I could also see it being the Holy Grail. Leica has several more things in its favor, and one of course is its long history with photojournalism. If only professional photographers or geeks worshipped Leica, let's face it, Leica would probably be dead. It would be a brand like Hasselblad, which of course has had its fair share of historical moments, such as landing on the moon, but even its history didn't stop it from being recently purchased by DJI, a drone company from China. Celebrities and hence rich collectors didn't really flock to Hasselblad in mass because Hasselblad cameras were larger, bulkier 120mm cameras. For celebrities for whom the smartphone just isn't good enough, something like Leica is perfect. It's beautiful, small, serious, and exclusive. But while legacy can define a brand, price matters too. Leica is just barely in the realms of affordability, while medium format cameras for example like Hasselblad or Phase 1 were professional tools and priced that way as well. <laughs> the Leica right now is like a luxury item, right? Okay. And then if it just remained with photography geeks, mm. it would go the way of Hasselblad, <laughs> which has like great history, yep. but it also ended up getting bought by DJI. So, All right. so they have to make a profit. Yeah, and okay. so then that's why, like right now, like people make fun of Leica for like selling out, mm. and it has kind of sold out. Which is why, like, you know, the digital Leica has all this stuff sold out, right? Okay. But that's why, like, I guess part of the appeal of this is, like you said, this is almost pre-commercial. Oh, for sure. It's like it's a pre-sellout. Yeah. So that's also part of the appeal. The classic part of it. Right. Right. So then, like, the digital stuff is like sell to like Chinese tourists mm. or like something like that, but then like this still has the heart and it's soul. It kind of has the soul, yeah. The, right. the, the classicness of the actual Leica brand. Right. The history and everything. If you, with ignoring... I would say anything past the M9. Is dead. Is dead. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it's gone. Okay. History's gone. The spirit's gone. The brand is not the same. All right. All right. After the M9. It's hard to really argue, even for fans, that Leica is much more than a name. But in many ways, that doesn't really matter, because owning a Leica does bring happiness to its owners. And that's important. Ultimately, what cameras you own are nobody's business. You could buy an M6 and never use it, except for the display in your house. You could own a Phase 1 and use it to shoot photos of the flowers in your garden. Who cares as long as you aren't fooling yourself that many cheaper cameras can do the same thing for much less? And after all, a large part of photography is having confidence as a photographer. If holding something as esteemed and well-crafted like an M6 gives you that, well then, bid away. So with the M6 episode over, we're about to return the camera to our friend Brian who lent us a camera. So he did ask us what do we feel about the camera and will we buy it ourselves. And the thing is, when I was using it, 
for this shoot, I thought it was a little bit clunky. I wasn't actually totally in love with it. Um, so I personally would not buy it. Um, I know lots of Leica lovers out there were talking about the optics and the beautiful mechanics, but for me, it felt a bit clunky. Uh, I'm gonna stick with Nikons, Mamiya's, and whatever. So um, anyways, well, me, Derek, and Anne would like to thank you guys for watching the show. Please subscribe if you liked it. And also, if you'd like to support our channel, please check out the Patreon link below.